It's going to be a carbon showcase tonight. Let's face it, the pros will be picking their lightest bikes for the Pyrenees. And here's a great look at this amazing material and the man who knows how to make it fly. When we do a carbon bike repair, the first thing we have to do is, is determine what damage exists on the bike. So we have a number of different ways we do that. We've got a visual inspection, we've got acoustic, and we've got ultrasound inspection. Now the ultrasound inspection will find things that you won't see visually. Unless you know what the damage is, you can't repair it. So you need to know inside the bike, within the layers, what damage exists. Catastrophic failures always happen at high speed. So they, they never happen when you're just rolling down to the milk bar. They happen when you're ripping down the wall in the Mount Dandenong or something like that. When you're going fast, that's when you get a catastrophic failure, when you least expect it. These bikes are production items and there's faults in production, like, like in anything. The whole notion of carbon being fragile is a bit of a myth. Generally, the higher models in a range will have more engineering behind them and that all costs money. And so people look at just the material costs on a frame and the material costs are quite low in actual fact, but it's all the engineering behind it. So, you know, we're talking handmade versus production. People don't realise there's probably more handmade aspect in a production carbon frame than what there is in a boutique handmade steel frame because with a metal frame, you're buying the tubes already made and, and often lugs and then just putting it together. So with the carbon frame, all of the aspects need to be done by hand, from cutting the material and laying it up into the mould. The shape of the bike is driven by marketing. You have to sell the bikes, you have to differentiate your product in the market. So the aesthetic profile of the bike has a significant effect on how the bike sells. So people like you know, the look of the bike. From, from a structural point of view, a straight round tube is pretty much optimum. In the wind tunnel, we worked with like a range of really good guys. So we had Cadell in the tunnel, we've had uh, Mick Rogers, um, obviously the, the Pursuiters, etc. from the track. They're all looking at improving their performance by going into the wind tunnel. The wind tunnel is just a tool that helps you achieve a certain goal. It doesn't mean that the goal is unattainable without it, but it's a very useful tool for, uh, for measuring these aspects of the performance. At the moment, it looks like carbon is, is the material of choice. Materials continue to evolve, so what is the best material today may not be the best material you know, in, in 10 years' time. So what's shown in other industries, if you look at tennis rackets and skis and, and a whole range of other industries where they used to use other materials and they've gone to carbon and they've, they've stuck with carbon now for quite some time. So, once you tool up for carbon, it's very cost effective for the performance that you get. So I don't think we're going to be seeing any other materials in, sort of in the short term, but in the long term, I'd be surprised if we didn't see something else.